Last week you saw me make this blanket and mother mold using silicone rubber and urethane resin. I mounted it to my rotational molding machine, and this week we're going to make hollow urethane resin castings from it. I'm also going to complete the bodies using Magic Sculpt and Casting Foam. What I have done is I've mixed up a 40 gram batch of resin. Uh, it's going to be our first shot in this mold. Frankly, I think it might be too much, actually. It seems like a lot for that little tiny mold. Uh, but we're going to see what happens. It'll be a really interesting test. It may be, it may be, should have been more like a 20 gram batch. All right, let's stick it in there. In fact, I think I am going to waste some resin here and only use about half of it because I just think that's, I feel like that's going to be too much for the first shot. Okay, let's spin. As usual, I have colored the resin so you guys can see it better. That's the only reason I did it, is for you to be able to see it. What you're doing is you're coating the mold with resin. The resin is just forced to run around the walls instead of stopping in one place and pooling, which is what you absolutely don't want it to do. Because if it pools in one place, it's gonna cure in a lump and you don't want curing in a lump. Try to be as random as you can be, and that's a good thing. You just get a rhythm going, and you keep an eye on your witness cup, which is right here, because the witness cup, as it always, is gonna tell us the status of the resin. Now, I'm noticing, as I look in the witness cup, that it's barely sagging at all, which means it's pretty well cured. And by the way, the reason it cured that fast is because of our hot box. If we didn't have a hot box, if I wasn't heating this resin in this cold studio, it's never going to cure. So as soon as I'm confident, let me make a poke with a stick. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. Done. Let's pop the, pop the cap out. Let's pour this kid down the hatch. Okay, witness cup set aside. Let's jam the little nozzle in there. I put that clamp on there to make it easier to spin the inner ring. It unbalances the machine and it makes it almost spin by itself. Now you could construct yourself a rotator that was much more finely built than this one. This thing has no bearings. It's just got holes in wood and screws. You could put in some, uh, t you know, some Teflon bearings or you could go any level of precision and fanciness. And the fancier it was, the smoother it would run and the more it would spin more easily. But the truth of the matter is, this works just fine. I'm getting good castings out of it because I'm paying attention mostly to the most important thing about roto casting, which is random continuous motion on all, you know, on all 360 degrees of random continuous motion. And that's just what's so important. It's not centrifugal force, it's just random continuous motion. As long as it's in motion, it's doing its thing. And then of course you keep an eye on the old witness cup, which is right here, because the witness cup tells us what's going on. And uh, it's uh, nah, still, still very liquidy in the old witness cup. So that means it's liquidy inside of the mold cavity. And that means we want to keep spinning it. Now, you ask yourself a question. Could you build one of these and set it up with like an Arduino controller and uh, do some computer programming to give yourself full random motion on two axis with a couple of little digital motors? Heck yeah, you could. Then you could push a button and walk away. If I was production casting hollow cast resin objects, that's exactly what I would do. And nowadays you could build an object like that yourself just out of a couple of little DC stepper motors and an Arduino controller and some clever math, some clever programming. Now I'm the Arduino, kind of a large 200 pound Arduino that's in control of this machine and it's full manual. But you know what? It works. It's a little more time consuming, but it works. Now, I'm checking the witness cup, seeing if there's any sag going on. It's getting there. So what is it? Where are we at? Are we at the gel state here? 
Now see, we're kind of at the gel state. It's not sagging much, but I'm gonna keep it spinning to make sure because I, it could sag or, and it can even do something worse, which might be pull away from the walls of the, the rubber. And now we don't want that. So we're gonna keep spinning it until I know that we're not gonna have any sag. And then we're gonna throw in the last shot and let it cure. Okay, I cut the, uh, took an X-Acto and cut the plug out. Then that let, so that lets me see the, what's doing with the resin on the inside. And I think that it is hard enough that we can unband this boy, see what we got. This is the fun part. I love this part. <laughs> so let's pull the rubber bands off and let us see what we've got. Now, theoretically, that should be stuck on there and it is. I should be able to pry that off. Ooh, and that was a little rougher than I like it to be. And I had to kind of deform it a little to get it off of there. Yeah, it's a little bit beat up from that ordeal, uh, but that's okay. We can with, we can make it work. First casting, not a complete raging success. We're gonna need a little tiny bit of a modification to it, but we got a usable casting and that's all I care about. In preparing to do the second casting, I decided that I was getting some deformation in the casting because of buckling in the mold and the culprits turned out to be these rubber, these red rubber bands. They were just, they were putting too much pressure. This is the thing about, the good thing about rubber bands is with any kind of fastening system in a rubber mold, it's really easy to put too much pressure when you close the mold and then that causes it to buckle. Um, and then if it buckles, you get these kind of deformations in the side, you know, waves as the rubber is deforming just a little bit. This is probably a usable casting, but it's going to take a little work to clean out. So I reset up the rubber bands using much lighter rubber bands, more of them, and not so much crisscrossing where I was putting pressure on the end, but putting more pressure pulling straight down in the middle. And now looking at it, my, my mold is just, the rubber blanket is just sitting perfectly in the mother, just absolutely perfectly on both sides. Uh, I think we're gonna get a much better casting. I put ease release on the inside. Hopefully it'll pop off easier and life should be much more magical and much more beautiful on this shot. So I'm gonna pour the second shot and I'll come back to you after I've, you've seen me do the first one. It's all the same. It's all more, kind of this kind of thing. Wee! That's kind of what it's all about. You know what it's about. Let me make the next piece and I'll come back to you and we'll see if we succeeded or not. Had to go find a long knife to pop this off in here with. Let's see if we can't get this underneath there. There we go. There it goes. All right. Yeah, that popped off nice. I made this one darker so you could see it easier. And uh, yeah, kind of came out nice. Came out good. Okay, we've got two usable castings. The first casting had the most flaws in it, specifically some deformation of the sides, which we're gonna fill out, which is kind of a pain, but I'm not gonna throw away a perfectly serviceable casting just because it got, it's got has some minor divots in it. I can sand those out. So now we got two, let's make one more and we're on to the next step of this project. If you recall, we're gonna make these three characters. This one's gonna be the rat. This one's the piranha. And this one is the stegosaur. Now I've just taken blocks, scraps of sculptor's foam. So the next step is to get these things cut out and glued on. <laughs> I sanded the foam pieces to fit the bottoms of the tops. See that rim I left? Because I needed to leave a rim like that and like that around each piece to account for the thickness of the Magic Sculpt skin. To glue these pieces on, I don't need anything fancier than a scrap of paper and a stick and some five minute epoxy. And because it's winter and it's cold, the epoxy has been in the hot box, so it's nice and warm. Okay, let's apply the epoxy pretty liberally to the foam because what I wanna do is I really wanna jam it down into the, the texture. And it's pretty rough. The open cells of the foam make this foam pretty rough, but that has the advantage of, of really, really bonding. This bond is gonna be way stronger than the foam. 
I like to let the epoxy get really grabby so that I don't have to hold it in the pieces in place or clamp them or anything. I just want the tack of the epoxy to hold them. Because you don't really have a lot of ability to move it around once it's in place because the, there's so much tack that I've developed here with this glue. Beautiful. Okay, let's put these pieces into the hot box, let them cure up at 80 degrees. That'll make them happy. And then we will move on to the carving phase, which is next. Foam sculpting is such a mess that I like to do it over the trash. I always have. Works like a champ. Now, it cars unbelievably fast. So fast you almost have to be careful, especially if the thing you're sculpting is the finished thing. Sometimes in a foam sculpt it is. In this case it's not. We're gonna skin it. Let's see how quickly that roughed down. Just, I mean, seconds. Literally seconds. What a mess, ugh. All right, done. All right, it's time to put a skin on this foam. Putting Magic Sculpt over sculpting foam is a technique I've used a lot in my life. Foam is just a great way to build up the bulk of any kind of a sculpture. I mean, you, you can do huge pieces in it, you can do small pieces like these. It has a really open cell structure, which means it's got a rough texture and the Magic Sculpt sticks to it beautifully and it makes a really hard, durable skin. Um, here, I'm gonna build up the side of the casting where, remember, if you remember early on, I caught kind of a divot in the casting, but no problem, it just filled right in. I just did that simultaneous uh, with putting on the skin. It's a technique that works well and uh, I use it quite a bit. One technique that you can use for smoothing out is take a hard surface and just roll and shape a piece around a hard surface and you can find that you can really smooth things out a lot. This Magic Sculpt smooths with water. It's weird that epoxy and water mix, <clears throat> but in this formulation they do. So I'm just rolling the guy around and that really smooths him out. Saves on sanding a little bit. It only works on convex forms, but it works. All right, very good. We got the first layers of clay laid on there. So now we have an actual body and they're looking good. We're gonna sand them smooth and keep going. Next week, I'm gonna divide this project into individual sculpts, starting with the piranha. Each of the characters is complex enough and has enough interesting features to warrant a video of its own. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it. I'll see you next week.